It's a weekday afternoon in Los Angeles, the epicenter of cannabis in the United States. This busy dispensary is open for business. Hi. But if everything looks normal, it isn't. This is, in fact, an unlicensed, illegal dispensary, part of the booming black market in California and around the country. It's what the cannabis industry says could be the biggest threat to sky-high expected revenues. The legal cannabis market in a very short period of time is going to grow from zero to somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 to $75 billion. Case in point, California. Early projections of more than $1 billion in annual cannabis tax receipts in 2018 are far from the $345 million collected. That's in large part because the illegal market can easily undercut the costs of running licensed dispensaries. It's not hard to see how. You guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. Go. A team of CNBC producers equipped with hidden cameras visited 10 illegal dispensaries throughout LA. Most aren't hard to find, and they're open day and night. Some have signs, others do not. But they all have one thing in common. They are brazenly breaking the law, operating with no license, selling potentially untested products, and allowing customers to openly consume. In this illegal dispensary down the street from the University of Southern California, customers are dabbing, smoking a highly potent cannabis concentrate. And if you want free weed, this store and others were happy to give it away. As the signs say, all you need to do is write a positive review on Weed Maps, an online site that lists both legal and illegal dispensaries around the country. If you do a okay, right here, oh, right here. Review on Weed Maps, uh, you get some shelter. Despite a daily limit on the amount of cannabis stores can sell to a customer, you can buy as much as you want at many of the illegal dispensaries. So, but we can get as much as we want. There's no limit. The black market is a huge problem. In some states, it's 70 to 80 percent of sales, and it's a big threat. And so a lot of states are thinking about how do we alleviate it. The two things is price and convenience. Attorney Patricia here is the founder of Cannabis Law Digest. It's taking a lot of the profits away from operators and therefore from the tax revenue. From a party in Toronto to Miami and New York City, the tone is decidedly upbeat at cannabis conferences. That optimism faces this reality, an estimated $70 billion in illegal marijuana sales nationally, seven times the legal market. And nowhere are legal operators feeling the impact more than in California, the country's largest legal cannabis market, where voters passed Proposition 64 in 2016. Businesses had to be in compliance with the license by January. But as we found, that clearly didn't happen. We found illegal store after store selling cannabis at deeply discounted prices. The parking lot is almost full as our producers enter this dispensary that openly advertises on the side of the building. Thank you. We can go in. This regular customer says he's a student at nearby USC. Oh, so you're here almost every day? Wait. At another location, CNBC producers walk inside are asked for their IDs, then are buzzed in. A clerk offers a first-timer deal on a popular product called Gelato. This one's going to be $35 for lunch, and then you're going to get five grams. Additional, like, for free. So the 1.5 for free, so it'll be five grams. There are more customers dabbing, something our producers were told is common in illegal dispensaries. Elsewhere, there are more perks at the illegal stores, and easy to see why they're thriving with all the discounts offered. We did not buy anything from the dispensaries. This store is open past the state mandated closing time of 10 p.m., another convenience for black market sales. And what are you guys opening? So so the 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 okay. We showed a compilation of our video to Los Angeles City Attorney Mike Fewer. Any surprises to you? No. I know that there are unlawful dispensaries operating in the city. It might be that some of the locations you just showed me are under investigation right now. 
How big of a problem is this? It's a very significant problem. And from a public health and safety standpoint, it's especially crucial that buyers of cannabis only go to the licensed shops. And yet we see a number of illegal dispensaries opening up because the profit motive is so significant. An illegal store can rake in ten to twenty thousand dollars a day, authorities say. So far, 151 illegal dispensaries have been shut down, with more criminal prosecutions pending. Is this different or worse than, than going after the guy in the corner selling weed before legalization? Oh, no, it's, it's qualitatively different. The amounts of money at stake are much more significant, for example. Turning off utilities is a routine tactic, as seen in this video shot by a witness during a recent raid at this illegal store in East L.A. The location was permanently closed. But just over half the stores reopened within a week, according to police. On Weed Maps, we found listings for 229 illegal dispensaries. The Los Angeles Police Department puts that number even higher, at 259. But no one knows exactly how many are in business. There are just 186 licensed dispensaries in L.A. Weed Maps was hit with a cease and desist letter from the state of California last year for aiding and abetting in violations of state cannabis laws because it allows unlicensed businesses to advertise. Weed Maps told CNBC it provides patients and consumers with valuable information about all things cannabis, and businesses can post their own listings. The company says targeting online platforms won't solve the unlicensed dispensary problem in California. The danger in these illegal stores is potentially unregulated products, like these, sold to unsuspecting customers. Legal dispensaries are required to sell regulated products which are tested. The city attorney's office has attacked the problem with a recent civil complaint, seeking millions in damages from one illegal dispensary. And we've alleged in our complaint that the product contained a toxin, something that is used as a pesticide on golf courses. This is exactly why legal store owners like Cameron Wald, executive vice president of Project Cannabis, is outraged at how bold the black market has become. We're facing, especially in California and, and L.A. specifically, an illicit market that is extremely strong. We're outnumbered three to one um, illicit operator to legal operator. So, you know, we have outrageous price compression that we have to see at our stores. How much easier do you think it is to operate as an illegal dispensary compared to what you go through? It's a lot easier. They have no compliance standards. They had no permitting process. They had no documentation, no, no legal process that they had to go through. So they're breaking the law, potentially threatening the health of consumers, and they're threatening your business. Correct. And they're doing this in plain sight. In plain sight. An illegal dispensary, Wald says, can charge close to 40 percent less than Project Cannabis, which has four locations in L.A., and must pay cannabis, excise, and sales taxes. Well, thank you. We'll be back. Thanks so much. None of the illegal dispensaries we visited responded to our request for comment, which isn't a surprise to David Welch, an L.A.-based attorney who represents the cannabis industry. California is the largest market in the world, just based on population and consumption rates. They are unable to actually realize the profits that people anticipate they're going to make because you have such a large illegal market. Statewide, California's Bureau of Cannabis Control has issued more than 3,900 cease and desist letters to illegal dispensaries and delivery services. Compare that to a total of 939 legal retailers. What you find are dispensaries are not being enforced against. Even when they're enforced against, they simply go and they open up the next day because the penalties are so low, it doesn't dissuade them from violating the law. And as we found in all the dispensaries in which our cameras captured illegal activity, it appears the boom in the black market in cannabis isn't going away anytime soon.